Hi and welcome to this new QuickTate episode. My name is Philippe Ozil, I'm a developer advocate at Salesforce and today we're going to be looking at the PubSub API and gRPC. Before we jump into the technical details of what the PubSub API is, let me give you a refresher on the streaming APIs. The streaming APIs regroup four different types of events, which are sometimes even called APIs, but they're more events. They're uh, divided into two categories. There are legacy events and more modern events. On the legacy side of things, we have generic and push topic, and these are no longer being actively developed. But then we have the modern uh, events, that there are the platform events and change that capture events. All of these streaming APIs rely on a single protocol when you work outside of the Salesforce platform. And this protocol up till now was limited to CometD. Now, CometD is not something that is actively developed at this point of time, so we would like to introduce a new method to connect to the streaming APIs. And this is where the PubSub API comes in. The PubSub API leverages a new protocol, which is state-of-the-art. It's called gRPC, it's developed by Google, and it's supported by more than 11 languages at this point. There are also some additional unofficial contributions which allow you to work with gRPC and other languages. Another great thing about gRPC is that it's leveraging modern technology such as HTTP2. This allows way more efficient network communication. Thanks to this, we now have fully bidirectional communication between, for example, a browser and the server, or even two servers. You can use the, the gRPC API to subscribe to events, but you can also use the gRPC uh, client to publish events back to the server. And this is pretty powerful. And we're gonna see that in a demo now. All right, for today's demo, we're gonna look at one of our many sample apps called eBikes. eBikes is a fictitious electric bike manufacturer and they have a range of products. And what we're gonna do now is that we're gonna create a new reseller order for these products. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to create a new, I'm going to select one of the accounts called Northern Trail Cycling and I'm going to create a draft uh, resell order. Now we can pick a number of products like this one, for example, I can just drag and drop it here. I can adjust the quantities and I'm going to take another one like this one, for example, the red one, X4 and also a number of mediums. Once we're happy with our order, the next stage is to send it to the uh, e-bikes manufacturing division. The e-bikes manufacturing division does not operate on the Salesforce platform. They have their own set of tools. And so in order to communicate with them, we're going to be using the PubSub API. So notice here there is the order status in a, in a path here. And what we want to do here is to send our order to the manufacturing division. This is in fact, in our case here, a uh, Heroku application built with Tiny Web Components open source. As soon as we click on Submit it to Manufacturing uh, breadcrumb here, this will change the order status. This will then fire a change data capture event, and the change data capture event will be captured by the eBikes manufacturing application. So let me do that now, I'm clicking, and here we go, you can see the order just arrived on the eBikes manufacturing site. The manufacturing division can now review the order, decide whether they can proceed or not, and let's say, for example, here they approve, this will also use the PubSub API. And what we're gonna do when we click on the proof is that we're gonna fire a platform event to notify eBikes org that order has been proved. So when I click on here, you're gonna see an update on the Salesforce org in a second. Yes. And here we go. We can see that our order was set to approved by the manufacturing division. We can now take a quick look at the code. We're looking at the source code of the manufacturing uh, division application. This is a node app running on Heroku. And uh, I'm going to guide you through what it does. So first of all, uh, we retrieve a number of variables from the environment, making sure they're here, reporting errors if they're not. Then we declare two channels. These are streaming API channels. One is for a change that capture when there is a change to a reseller order. And the second one is a platform event. That's the one we'll be firing back to the org. Uh, to notify the org that we have changed the status of the manufacturer of the sorry of the reseller order and this is the body of the app the first thing that we do here is that we connect to the salesforce org we use a client in this case it's actually a js force client to log in 
Now, the PubSub API requires an authentication token. So to get this token, we first need to authenticate with a client. And this is what this is doing here. Finally, we use the PubSub API to retrieve some uh, schemas for the two events that we've declared. We create the PubSub client here. This is actually a gRPC client and it requires a number of things. First of all, it requires a protofile. The protofile is a text file which describes the different operations that the um, gRPC client supports. It has operations like publish and subscribe, for instance, and also get schema. Then we specify the endpoint for our PubSub API. This is going to be on the Salesforce org. And finally, we pass the Salesforce client so that we're able to retrieve and extract the authentication token for our subsequent calls. And now this is really the first operation we do on the um, gRPC uh, layer. We do actually two calls in parallel. And in these two calls, we're reaching the schemas for our two uh, streaming events, order CDC topic and manufacturing P topic. So this is retrieving the schemas and we're storing the schemas in those variables here. We'll need the schemas in order to perform operations like subscribing and publishing. Next, we subscribe to the first event. So we subscribe to the change data capture event. We pass in the channel. We pass in the schema of the event. And here I've hard coded the number 10, which is the number of events that the uh, pub sub client will wait for be before disconnecting. So this is uh, a limit that is put in place in order to avoid being uh, overloaded with events. If there is a huge spike, uh, the client will shut down and will not absorb the, all the spike. Obviously, you can reconnect from time to time, or you can increase this limit as needed. Since this is a small demo, I've left it to 10. And then finally, there's a callback. Each time we receive a new change data capture event, we'll be running this function. We extract the status of the reseller order from the change event, if it is present, because uh, it could be that the change data capture event is not tied to a status change. It could be that we've changed another field in our, our reseller order. We retrieve the header of the change data capture event, and then finally we filter a bit the events. So we are going to only going to take uh, updates operations, not just insert or uh, delete. And then we're going to filter on events which have a status, so where the status has been modified. Then since this is a batch operation, we need to rotate on the different uh, orders that are included. And for the um, selected um, messages, we'll fire a uh, web socket uh, call to the uh, browser that is listening uh, to manufacturing events. So this will allow us to calculate uh, and display the order information and show it with a little animation that we had before. Next, we are listening to WebSocket events. So this is coming from the browser and essentially each time we go into this method here, it means that the browser is sending us something and what we're listening in, in this instance is messages from the app when the status of the order on the manufacturing side of things is changing, whether it is approved or rejected. So what we do is that we grab the order ID and the status from the message. We build a uh, schema for sending a message to Salesforce. And so there are a number of things we fill here, the created date, created by ID, and also the order ID and status. Finally, we use the PubSub API or gRPC to publish the event. Here you'll find again the uh, platform events channel that we're using to communicate back with the Salesforce org, the schema of the event, and the data that we just prepared above. And that's it. That's it for the short tour of our app. So that's a wrap for the gRPC and the pubs of API. I hope that you learned something today. Make sure to check out these resources. Everything is on GitHub. There is a link to the uh, official repository for the pubs of API, and you'll find links uh, to other resources such as the documentation, a blog post, and also a podcast episode. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe, and if you like this video, let us know, and see you around.